Ahoy there, Legion! It's the Monday after a dev stream, so you know it's time for a recap and review to let you know what you might have missed. Busy press week for DE as they had a convention to attend in Ontario just yesterday, and a few days before that they were at the New York Comic Con. The short list of what was announced there, being a new frame who is going to use bows similarly to how Mesa uses pistols, she will deal toxin damage, have the ability to control projectiles she fires, and even has a desecrate-like move that works on living targets instead of corpses. We'll put a link to that in the description for you, as we have posted timestamps and a comment on that video for you. Now for DevStream 61, Console Squad. Good news! Update 17.7 is headed for certification, so that should be available to you in the next week or so. The long-awaited Mios Chainsword, a la half of Kratos' weaponry, has been pushed back several times, but now is aiming for a November release. Its quick attacks will only use the sword itself, but once equipped you can start whipping the chains around and cover some rather large distances for a melee weapon. Also on the way is a dual fire axe that is yet to be named. Named. This was revealed during the announcement of the Steam Workshop functionality, which is set to go live this week. If you're unfamiliar how that works, Tenno with the flair for the artistic can submit models and skins to DE. If they like it, it gets added to the game, and every time it's purchased, they split the profits between you and them, going straight to your Steam wallet. Play your cards right, and Warframe will buy you all the plat you'd ever need. The current revive system feels outdated and punishing to newer Tenno. Come update 18, they're removing the option to pay for revives and instead just refilling it for you for free whenever you return to the Lisette, which would make tactical slightly less nail-biting for us pug lifers out there. The chat UI is getting a complete overhaul. From private chat channels to emojis, or what Mogamu coined as Tenojis, pretty soon a rather sleek new look will be headed your way. Console Tenno? They didn't leave you out. They are working on making autocomplete mo better and less frustrating for you too. Continuing on with that UI update, daily login rewards are going to get the 2.0 treatment. Now dubbed the Daily Tribute System, every day you log in the game will remember and it will no longer of a set. After hitting certain milestones, say every 50 days or so, you might unlock a blueprint to a weapon you don't already own, or even exclusive sigils or weapon skins. Before you ask, they do not have a retroactive function in place. They're currently toying with the idea of tying it to mastery rank, but as I find that system even more outdated and shallow myself, I'd rather it be tied to hours played directly instead of how many mastery fodder weapons you've equipped. Either way, it's still under deliberation, so we'll find out what they'll decide when this goes live. Update 18. Trinity! <laughs> I know, I know, stop me if you heard this one before, but classic Trinity skin is getting, you can say it with me if you wanna, cloth physics. This is about the fifth time it's been stated to be in the works, but as Trinity Prime is a wiggly lobster butt, I suppose it's proof that it's actually getting work done. So keep those fingers crossed, Legion. You never know when it might just arrive. Star Chart 3.0 is still a hot topic around the office, and folks were wondering what's going on with Void Keys in this new incoming system. While the Void might be getting destroyed soon, Void Fishers will remain on the map, which will be able to access with our keys. Steve again said he doesn't wish to alter the drop rate of prime items, only to make the process of acquiring them less mind-numbing. It was hinted that the tile sets might be different, or the enemies you face off against might change. We'll see just how these intended changes actually play out firsthand come update 18. Charge attacks are in. Many of the old-timers out there might have missed these since Melee 2.0 removed them in a somewhat ironic fashion, and the implementation is slightly different. Before we held the quick attack button down, which was actually the only one we had at the time, and that would cue the charge attack. Now we have to feather the keys a bit, and if we chain it properly, we can perform consecutive charge attacks back to back. These can be performed in mid-combo, on the run, and only when the melee weapon is actually equipped. Any Ignis fans will be happy to know you can proudly let your inner pyro shine, as the Ignis is getting a substantial buff. They announced this after showing off the Grenier Cat Bro Handler's animations, as she, too, will be using the soon-to-be-buffed weapon and model. I'm happy to announce some actual buffs to frame this week instead of some of those nagging nerfs that kept cropping up. First up, and I'm being totally unbiased here, it's my boy Rhino. His first ability will perform more or less exactly like Atlas is, where it gets cheaper and more powerful the longer you chain it together. It might even scale in damage based on your melee weapon equipped, but that was up for debate. Iron Skin will now behave like Frost's Snow Globe. You'll be briefly immune, soak up some damage, and then that multiplies the strength of your final shield. In short, scalable defensive options he desperately needed. Roar seems to be untouched from its previous buff, and now Stomp will make enemies more susceptible to damage from charge, making that bit of a combo option if you like. Yeah, well, I could drop the mic right there and call it a day. Saren's getting a rework too, so I suppose I should mention some of that. If you like the idea of comboing your abilities together, you're gonna love Saren 2.0. It is currently planned for all of her abilities to affect the others. For example, if you cast Molt, then Venom onto that Molt, enemies who damage your decoy will become poisoned. The damage Molt takes is stored like Nova's bubble, which you can then unleash 
on top of the damage you'd normally deal with Miasma. If you cast Venom on an enemy, then melee them down with Contagion Active, you'll burst Venom quickly and cause it to spread even faster. All her status damage can be modded for duration as it ticks once per second, and for now her planned passive actually increases her status effect duration by 25%. You can expect Saren's rework and Deluxe Skin this October. Also coming this month is supposedly the most hilarious seasonal content yet. They didn't expand on it more than that, but as long as it's not more foggy Earth levels, I'll be happy. A question about the Umbra versions of Warframe was asked and Steve said it's basically the opposite of a Prime. Lore-wise, these might be related to the Feral or even Proto Warframes when they were first being formed during the Technocyte infestation. But don't quote me on this, that's just taking a stab in the dark. Speaking of stabbing in the dark, the Stalker is not only tied to the upcoming cinematic quest, but he's been confirmed to be getting a rework. But I'm sure y'all probably farmed his entire weapon options off him already. Right. Any news you're particularly looking forward to and you can't wait to get your hands on? Let everyone know in the comments what your own precious is. Not gonna lie, that Rhino rework is looking mighty fine. He's still probably gonna get hated on, but thanks to Iron Skin's buff, he can take the heat just fine. Hope this recap and review helped you out, saved you some time, and put a smile on your face. As always, thank you for watching, and catch you next time, Legion. Take care.